achievement. Uh, so I do want to let you know that this next hour will be a great opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about the scholars program, hear from our students um, who are actually currently in scholars. Um, and I also want to remind you um, that if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them live during the live Q&A at the end. Um, of course, you know, we understand some folks are shy or, or prefer to ask them uh, via the chat. So you can absolutely use the chat feature in order for you to ask your questions. And we'll make sure that we'll get back to you um, either on the chat or we'll answer it live, but for sure it will be answered. So without further ado, I'd love to introduce our director of the program, uh, Professor Abigail, Abigail Kowski. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. It's nice to meet you. You know, Alfred, can I get stop sharing for a minute so I can see them and then go back to the PowerPoint? Sure, absolutely. Ah, so I see some people. I like to see faces. Okay, so put on your videos, please, so we can see you. It's nice to meet you all. Okay, so um, I just wanted to say hello and just see faces first. All right, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do a little presentation about the Nursing Scholar Program. And um, if you have any questions, please ask. And then I'm going to talk a little about your curriculum for the four years. Uh, all of course, all um, the information about the curriculum, of course, is on the website for Hunter College Nursing Program. And then I have four representatives from each of the cohorts to talk to you a little. And then, of course, uh, if there's more questions, you can certainly ask questions at that point. But please ask questions anytime if you if I come come across something that you have a question about. Anybody have a question right now before I even begin? Um. Hi. So. I just wanted to ask, like, are you guys going to go over what's going to be in our curriculum for our freshman year? Yes. All right. Thank you. Just wanted to know. Okay. Anybody else have questions? Okay. All right. So I'm going to share the screen now and we're going to talk a little about the, um, the Scala program. Okay. Good. Okay, so welcome, of course. And so the Nursing Scholar Program began in, the nursing program began in fall of 2014. And it's for bright, highly engaged students to pursue nursing education within the context of an enhanced academically challenging curriculum that instills a desire for learning. Scholars receive a full in-state tuition gap scholarship applied after all other financial aid to cover balance and one year free housing in Brookdale dormitory. Scholars also have priority registration and special advising with the scholar advising team. In addition, students admitted to the program receive guaranteed admission directly to the School of Nursing with completion of first year generic program pre-nursing requisites with grade and GPA requirements. I'll talk a little about that a little more. Um, so, just that you understand, the, one of the really great things about the Scholar Program is that usually people who are in freshman year at Hunter College and they want to pursue nursing, they have to apply for the nursing program, which begins in sophomore year, and they also have to take a uh, pre-nursing test, an exam. Depending on that, they will be either admitted or not admitted. Uh, we usually have hundreds of students who apply for the nursing program uh, in freshman year. But you people who um, accept the scholarship uh, will be guaranteed admission to the sophomore, it starts in sophomore year, like I said, sophomore nursing program, as long as you, if you see down here, completion of first year generic program pre-nursing requisites. In other words, you have to take chemistry and you have to take statistics in first year, freshman year. You have to get at least a B plus in those classes and you have to keep a 3.2. So you, freshman year, you'll take your chemistry uh, one and chemistry two, and you'll take statistics. And so you have to get a B plus in those and keep a 3.2 GPA. If you do that, you do not have to apply for the nursing program. You're immediately admitted into the nursing program. Okay, so graduates of the Nursing Scholar Program are uniquely qualified to enter the profession of nursing to become leaders in the profession, obtain doctoral education, 
and make valuable contributions to the profession and discipline of nursing through nursing education, research, or advanced practice. Anybody have any questions so far? Okay, I'm just gonna keep going. Okay, so what I do is um, every semester, there's at least two seminars and one event for each cohort. So the freshman focus in the scholar program is on the profession of nursing. So we used to meet at Brookdale, we used to have a nice time, we used to have lunch or breakfast, depending on when your time block was. And um, we would have then also a seminar or, or an event. So for example, in freshman year, um, I do a presentation on the profession of nursing, okay? And um, someone from prestigious scholarships comes and speaks with you and someone from education abroad. You can do education abroad. Well, first of all, there are a lot of other scholarships that you can apply for while you're in the nursing program. Just because you have this scholarship doesn't mean that you cannot apply for other scholarships. And so Stephen Lassonde comes and talks to the freshmen about other scholarships. As far as education abroad, you can do an education abroad program, but it has to be during the winter or summer semesters. You cannot do an education abroad program during the fall or spring semesters because the nursing curriculum is very, very tight. It's very, very structured. So, um, but you can do education abroad and I really encourage all the students to do education abroad. Okay, so the fall event is, um, we watched a movie this year and we discussed it, it was about nursing. And then we had someone talk about the Food Policy Institute. And then I did another uh, seminar on the art of nursing. Sometimes we have more than three. Spring semester, there was a gatekeeper workshop on mental health that the, the freshmen went to. And then they met with the senior scholars to, um, we used to have a nice lunch with the freshmen and the seniors to, for the seniors to give advice and guidance. And then spring seminar number two was the self-care workshop and service learning opportunities, which I'll talk about in sophomore year. Um, you are required to join the Nursing Students uh, Association of New York State. Uh, that's in freshman year. So for sophomore year, the focus is on service learning. And for example, the first uh, seminar in the fall, I talk about service learning. Uh, the event is someone, a uh, faculty who just re retired actually, she did the Peace Corps and she did MedLife. So she talks about those experiences. And then we talked about another movie um, and discussed it. For spring semester, um, I did a presentation on the art of nursing, which is the communication of nursing. Uh, we used to tour the Henry Street Settlement uh, last week or two weeks ago. We had um, a virtual tour of the Henry Street Settlement, which is a settlement um, on the Lower East Side that was begun by Lillian Wald, who's a nurse. And it's a tremendous, it's still going today. It's more than 100 years uh, strong and it has a lot of different community uh, outreach programs. Uh, spring seminar number two, um, they're going to look at the New York City Council meetings and they're going to look at those uh, because those council meetings advocate for different people in uh, New York as far as those maybe who are homeless, veterans, things like that. And so part of service learning is advocacy. So, um, so now in sophomore year, you're required to do 20 hours of service learning at designated sites that I have coordinated with to have uh, nursing students volunteer there. So Bellevue Hospital has a reach out and read program where you read to student, uh, children waiting for the pediatric uh, clinic. There's a food pantry on the upper, um, upper Harlem and there's the opioid overdose prevention program at Weald Cornell Medical Center. And there are also heart to heart clinics. So the different places that students can go and do their 20 hours of service learning. And then junior year, the focus is on research. So um, I do a presentation on qualitative research. The juniors all participate in a junior scholar research workshop, which is a two hour, two part workshop. And um, that enables you all to be research assistants for nursing faculty. Uh, the seminar two is introduction to clinical research nursing. It's a presentation by Rockefeller University. Um, and then the um, fall seminar number three is qualitative research presentation. I have a guest speaker come in to talk about her research. Spring semester, we focus on quantitative research. And um, we used to go to the Hillbrun Family Center for Research Nursing at Rockefeller University. Hopefully, um, we will be able to do that soon. Um, but we had a virtual presentation about two weeks ago. And then the spring seminar, I have someone present on quantitative research. 
And then, um, as I said, research positions are available for you to work with nursing faculty. And so last year is the focus is on leadership in nursing. So I have a nursing faculty come and talk to the uh, seniors about different places to work in nursing, whether clinical nursing, research nursing, administrative nursing, education. And um, then we do a seminar on bullying and incivility in nursing. The full event uh, is the Steps to End Family Violence presentation. It's a training program. And the spring semester, we do a self-care workshop um, to remind people that it's really important to take care of yourself. If you're going to be a nurse, you have to take care of yourself. The spring event is a job interview skills workshop where it helps you prepare for uh, the interviewing you're going to be doing as soon as you graduate. The um, spring event, we usually do a scholar luncheon. Of course, we didn't do that last year. Um, and then the uh, last event is the Scholar Achievement Celebration, which actually the seniors are in the process of um, organizing that now. We had to do a virtual last year, and we're going to have to do a virtual again this year. Um, also, you um, are encouraged to join the um, Honor Society of Nursing in senior year and also the Alumni Association. Okay, so that's the Scholar Program. So before I continue now with uh, curriculum, anybody have any questions about the Scholar Program? Anybody? No? Okay. Do any of my, um, so let me introduce now um, my class for, oh, Mary, you have a question. Yeah, so um, I, I was wondering how um, there are multiple seminars throughout the year. How does that factor into like credit requirements or do they don't count to credit requirements for key? Well, they, don't, they don't count toward credit requirements. <laughs> so. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, what we do is, so for example, when you're going to make up your schedule for the fall, you cannot uh, register for any classes that will be on Wednesdays 2 to 4, because that's your time block for freshman year, Wednesdays 2 to 4. Um, after freshman year, what happens is the, um, the class liaison, I have a class liaison for each cohort, the class liaison will um, tell me after every sophomore, every person ingoing sophomore uh, has registered what their available days and times where I could do these seminars and events. So for example, um, let's see. for example, um, it depends on people's schedule. So for example, the sophomores um, this uh, spring semester, Wednesdays 11.15 to 1 p.m. was the best time that they could meet with me. And it also depends on the classes that I'm teaching. And then on uh, the juniors, Wednesdays 3 to 5 was a good time for them to meet. And then seniors was Wednesdays 1 to 3. So I have to coordinate four cohorts plus my classes. But um, so, and that, that time block then has to be kept open for the whole semester because you never know when I'm going to throw in another seminar or event if something else comes up that I think is interesting for you. Okay, but it does not go toward any of your credits and all. It's really a good time for you to connect with your other scholars. And unfortunately, that we're doing everything virtual now, but it really is a nice time for you to get together and, um, you know, be with your friends. You know, I graduated school, I probably shouldn't tell you this, but I started college uh, 50 years ago. And um, I still am very close to the people that I went to nursing school with. I lived at Mount Sinai Hospital. Uh, City College of New York years ago in the uh, 70s had a nursing program and I lived in Mount Sinai with them. And I, I Zoom with them now every month. And I used to see them more often, but now of course we don't see each other that much. But, but you really get tremendous connections with um, people that you go to nursing school with because it's a very intense experience. And, you know, also when you're in your clinical areas, you will see people who are very ill, maybe dying. And it's, it's, it's very, very uh, important that you have a support system. And that's what the scholar program really provides for you. Um, I was wondering if any of the um, my, my representatives, my class representatives could speak to um, could speak to that. Sure, I can. So hi, everyone. I'm Maddie. I'm a senior currently. And I have to say that was definitely one of the biggest reasons why I ended up committing to Hunter after finding out that I got into the scholar program because I had a friend who was a year above me and she kept talking about how great the community was. And 
that's definitely been one of the biggest factors because nursing school is very tough and having that cohort right from the start made the biggest difference because you guys will see down the road you're going to want to split up notes and studying and different things like that so it's very important to have that group and Dr. Kataski was very good with every meeting she would always you know make sure we if we had any concerns or complaints to, we could always go to her whereas when you're going to Hunter but not in the scholars program it's very easy to get lost in the masses because as Dr. Kataski mentioned before there's a lot of freshmen who go in for nursing but when you're just in the nursing program from the start you you have a lot more of the one-on-one -on -one advising which is very very helpful. Thank you Madeline. Um, let me just introduce the other representatives. So Madeline is a senior, and then we have uh, Menar, who is a junior. Menar, you want to say hello? Hi, everyone. My name is Menar, and just like Professor Kataski said, I am a junior. Um, uh, I feel like I agree with what Madeline was saying about the sense of community in the program. Uh, it's it's really made a huge difference for me. Just like from the beginning, um, they sat us all down. They're like, these are the classes you have to sign up for. Do you need any help? We went into Blackboard together. Um, I've met some of my closest friends in the program, like my best friend. We study together all the time, split up notes. It makes a huge difference. Nursing school, like I was hearing this all the time. It's hard, it's hard, but man, it is difficult. And having like your friends that you can always count on it makes a huge, huge difference. Also, like my freshman year, I remember I was teamed up with like a mentor and I would text her all the time. She was a year older than me. Um, for any questions I had, she would send me her notes sometimes. She'd tell me, oh, watch out for this with this professor, focus on this. It was, it was honestly like joining this program made a huge difference for me. And then I have um, Yamaris is the sophomore class representative. Yamaris, you wanted to say hello if you want to say yeah. hello. Hi everyone, my name is Humaris. I am a sophomore in the nursing program. And I definitely agree that the nursing program has really helped me um, like make connections with some of, um, some of the students. Like I remember freshman year, um, I, I met like four other freshmen in the nursing program. We all just helped each other like do work. And especially like freshman year, you're also adjusting to college, you're adjusting to like Blackboard and like, I wasn't really like good at using Blackboard, but my friends who were in the program did know how to use Blackboard, so they helped me with that. And like midway through the semester, I think it was, um, I think COVID happened my second semester of freshman year. So orgo, like organic chemistry was really hard, but knowing that I had like other students in the program who could help me, um, we helped each other with homework and we helped each other with assignments. We, we taught each other like some things that we didn't know, know too well. And I think like just having like a group of people that you, you're gonna see like often during your freshman year is really like an advantage because as a freshman, you're also like nervous. You're making like new friends, you don't know like you don't see them often you might you guys might be in different classes and it's really hard to actually like make a make a friendship but in a nursing program like you see them often you're in the same classes so it's like really easy to make a friendship cool and they'll be with you like the whole semester and we have alejandro who is a freshman scholar alejandro you want to say hello and say anything Hey everyone, uh, my name is Al Hunter and yeah, like uh, Dr. Kotowski said, I am a freshman. And um, kind of speaking to what Yamaris and Madeline said, it's the nursing scholar program for me was like a big a backbone. And I've only been in it for a year, so they uh, obviously have more experience, but so far from what I've you know, experienced this past year, being online is difficult for sure. And having the nursing scholar program is definitely a big step up because you have these people, you have a lot more advisors around you. You have Dr. Katowski is very helpful to seminars. I know someone asked a question about if they're for credit, they're not a huge time commitment and you get a lot out of them, which I think is a pretty important um, aspect of trying to enter into, you know, learn more about the field of nursing before you actually enter into it. And uh, what Yamaris was talking about with Orgo, I'm taking that class now and I can tell you that having the nursing scholar program with you 
having that cohort, it's definitely a big help. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you, everybody. Um, okay, so any other questions now before I go on to curriculum? I have a question. So how many cohorts are there? Or is there just like one specific cohort? Explain, I, I, can, I, can you explain that to me? Sure, so what I mean by that is there's a cohort per year. So there's the freshman cohort, sophomore cohort, junior and senior. And usually there's uh, between 20 and 30 uh, scholars per cohort. Okay, so it's all the, anybody that's uh, in it, like freshman, like if you come into the program freshman year, you'll be with your freshman cohort for the four years. You get together with your cohort just for seminars and events. Sometimes I get, for example, the freshmen and seniors meet together. We used to do a luncheon together so that they could, um, you know, talk to the seniors about um, any, you know, questions they have or concerns about the nursing program. And it also is very helpful to see the seniors because it's, it's, you know, this is something that I can do then because you see people that have been able to do it. So um, that's what it means. Understand, Valentina? Yep, thank you for explaining to me. Anybody else? I have a question. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Um, I just want to clarify, is each nursing scholar student paired with an advisor who will help them like make their schedule and make sure they're getting all the nursing prerequisites? Okay, so for freshman year, I'm only your advisor for nursing programs and nursing courses. Um, but uh, freshman year, you will be guided by the scholar advising team. Um, and you will have your own advisor through the scholar advising team. Alfred, do you know anything more about that? I think you uh, pretty much covered it. Right, yeah. So, I, and really, I, I mean, um, Al, you know, my class representatives, have any of you guys had any difficulty in registering or figuring out what you have to do? No? Okay. It's very, very structured, like I say, and I think you'll see that. And you'll know what you're supposed to be taking. And um, like I said, any questions you have about nursing programs, of course, you ask me. But you'll see from the, uh, the, the slides I'm going to go through now how it's really, really uh, very structured, the whole program. It's not like you can decide to take a different type of theory class in freshman year or I mean sophomore year or junior year. You have to take whatever the, uh, the class is. And I, I'll show you that now. Okay, so this is the freshman uh, scholar course map. And so what this means is that for next fall, you'll be taking chem and then chem lab, and then you'll be taking English, psych, and statistics. For the spring semester, you'll be taking English, you'll be taking like chem second, you know, organic, uh, organic lab, psych, uh, history course. Um, you can take an elective at that point. And there's um, a brochure that will actually tell you what electives are accepted. So that's freshman year. Sophomore year, you take in physiology and you take introduction to nursing, genetics, um, individual and society humanities, and you take a core course. And the core courses are, again, that's something that you would talk to your scholar advising team about, not me, um, but you would talk to the people uptown about that. And then you have by uh, anatomy physiology two, nursing fundamentals. This is where you start sophomore year, spring semester. This is where you start um, actual nursing. Um, and you have fundamentals of microbiology and patho, pathophysiology. Um, so, Yamaris, you're the um, you're the sophomore now, right, Yamaris? How is this semester? Spring semester of sophomore year is the most difficult. How's it going for you? So, spring is really hard. Um, like in the beginning, it was even more difficult because. I was adjusting to the new classes and like it's more intensive like reading wise it's also like so much there's so many assignments due and I just feel like well right now I just feel like there's a lot of like I, I can't take a break from studying like um I study one material and then the next week I have another exam then next week I have to study for my lab and then it's it's been pretty rough but it's manageable I think that um the nursing the program has also like we we share like um study guides and we help each other we also um 
Like if anyone has any questions, I'm talking about like in the nursing program in general, but like if anyone has any questions, we just like, we made a group chat and we asked them there and we answer each other. Um, right now I'm taking the all the classes there and I'm also having a clinical and I have an in-person lab on Fridays and my clinicals on are on Sunday in the morning. And I just want to point, thank you, Maris. I just want to point out to you that Manar, who's a junior, and Madeline, who's a senior, have gotten through spring semester and sophomore year. And I want Alejandro to look at that too. So there is uh, people who do, and most people do get through it. You know, nursing school is difficult. It really, it really is difficult. It's very challenging, but you can all get through it. And I think what the scholar program offers is this idea of uh, tremendous support. Um, okay, any questions? Okay, so. We also uh, encourage people not to work spring semester of sophomore year. So if you want to work or feel you need to work, that's the one semester that we really encourage you uh, to try to make it that you don't don't work that semester, just that one semester. Okay, so for junior year, you'll take uh, nursing research and theory, um, adult health and uh, illness, pharmacology, uh, nutrition, a core course, uh, pharmacology two. Uh, this is um, pediatric and maternity nursing you'll take, and then an independent study, and then a hunter core. And everybody follows this program. You can't change it. The only thing you can do differently is take a different core or different elective. So for senior year, you take ethics, end of life care, public health nursing. I teach mental and behavioral health nursing. So I will see, see you in senior year. You take an elective, a core course, um, acute uh, adult acute illness and immersion clinical, gerontological nursing, advanced synthesis of nursing knowledge, health policy and leadership and a hunter core. So um, those are your four years and you really, like I said, you cannot veer from them uh, for the major courses. So it's very easy, like people know what you're supposed to take, you'll know what you have to take. Uh, it's not confusing at all. It's not like you're a psychology major and you can, you're kind of can be all over the place or whatever. Uh, tutoring is available through the Health Professions Education Center, which is HPEC, which is located at Brookdale. And there's also the Skirbel Science Learning Center, which also offers tutoring. The Counseling and Wellness Services of um, Hunter College, it's very important that you uh, are aware of this. They have counseling services. They also have some workshops that they're doing now actually for anxiety and stress and things like that. Just a few things, and I know Alfred will talk more on these if you have specific questions, but uh, previous college credits, you can check out how your credits can transfer at this website. Um, class registration, you'll be hearing soon about registration from the uh, scholar advising team. Brookdale will be open for fall, so you can apply now um, at this website. I'll see if I can get these, uh, this information, or maybe, I don't know if Alfred, this is sent to you already um, to make sure you get this information. And um, you can create your own community of new scholars. But the, um, yes, Madeline. Um, but I know the um, Madeline Menar and um, Alejandro and Yamaris, I know that you um, have created a Facebook page or something, right? For your groups. You all have a Facebook page. Yes, there's a Facebook page and then a group chat as well for each separate year. Okay, all right. So everybody, you know that you you you're just right there to get in touch with your community. You know your um your other scholars. So um, I'm just going to try to show you this Hunter Blackboard. So the way I communicate with the scholars is through um, this Blackboard organization. Um, this ensures timely and efficient way of communicating with all scholars and discussion boards are set up for attendance confirmation for all seminars and events for postings about each seminar event for commentary of each seminar and event. In addition, each cohort has a class liaison who is the advisor's direct link to the students. The class liaisons create a Facebook page through which students in each cohort can communicate with each other. 
So I introduce you to the school representatives today. I'm just going to see if I can um, if I can pull this up. Okay. So this is my blackboard, and this is the nursing honors program. Okay, and this is so this is where actually I communicate with the students. So for those of you who are not familiar with Blackboard, um, you will learn this very quickly. But uh, so this is Nursing Honors Program. It used to be called the Nursing Honors Program, and I can't change the name. They won't, they won't let me change the name, but it should be the Scholars Program. But this is where I put announcements. Um, there's honest student general information here. For example, it has information about the tutoring and counseling. And then each cohort has um, information about, so these are the spring seminars and events that we've done so far. And these are commentaries. So, um, and each each cohort has their own uh, area to go to to look up if they want to, you know, uh, get the PowerPoints from presentation that I've done or um, information that the students had said about the uh, the seminar or the event. Um, let's see. So I'm just going to show you. So, for example, here's the freshmen, and these are all. So I go to the discussion board. And um, what, what you would do to confirm attendance at something is, for example, here. So here we have, this was the spring seminar that we just did um, in, uh, I believe it was the end of January, beginning of February. And so what, what you'll do is you'll get this email and it'll be an announcement too on the Blackboard. It'll say the freshman spring seminar is a simulation experience. Well, we used to do this in the nursing lab and a presentation by the um, Will Cornell. Please confirm attendance through this seminar and I give you the date. And what you do is you just click on this and then you create a thread and you confirm attendance. And that's how I know. Um, so right now I have these sophomores confirming um, they're gonna do something. So here I go to the sophomores and right now the discussion board, this is the only discussion board that's going on. So the sophomore spring seminar number two, which is actually in two weeks, they're gonna, uh, view a New York City Council committee hearing. And so right now I have two of the um, two of the uh, people tell me what committee hearing they're going to go to. Um, so then they and then what they do is everybody writes then a comment about the seminar or event. And then what I do is, for example, I post I post a commentary on, um, and I send it to the seniors. So the seniors, their last um, event was uh, a job interview skills workshop. And this is all the comments that the seniors made about the, and you post that on the discussion board. So that's the um, Blackboard, I think. Questions. <laughs> That's the last slide. Okay, so um, so anybody have any questions? Well, first of all, do my class representatives anybody want to say anything? Madeline, Menor, Yamaris, or Alejandro, would you like to say anything? Um, I want to say um, like. I know it's like a little bit, especially since you guys are online, it might be a little bit like scary, you might be nervous. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything, you can feel free to reach out to either, I'm sure any, any one of the other representatives and myself as well, um, guiding you in terms of like Blackboard, the classes you have to take, any questions you may have. We're always here. It may seem tough, but like you guys will get through it. After every year, you're gonna be like, wow, like last year was so easy. I wish I would have thought it was easy then. Like you'll be fine. And we're all here if you ever need us. Madeline? It is going off of what Manar said. That's just another great thing about the program is that you really have a lot of upperclassmen to reach out to because all of the advisors are very helpful and everything. To be honest, I found talking to my mentor who was a year or two older than me was really the most helpful thing because they had just gone through the experience themselves. So really take advantage of that. Reach out to, I'd be more than happy to discuss further if you guys have any questions about things or even just for support and just study tips so 
Yamara? Yeah. yeah, I think that um, knowing that there's other like scholars who are a year ahead of you um, is really a great advantage because I also reached out to one of the um, scholars in, in, in the junior year and she's been really helpful. Like I asked her like, um, how's this professor like? What should I focus on? Like, do you have any study tips? And sometimes like she'll even like give me her notes, like like the notes she wrote and like I would help, she would just help me study like for that. So I think definitely like reach out to like the upperclassmen. If you, if you ever need any help, just reach out to like use your resources, like your mentor, if you have one, the upperclassmen, your advisor, and just like know that you have the support to like succeed in the program that although it's like hard right now, like, yeah, right now, um, you have all the support that you could get like in this program and you, you will like pass it. Alejandro? Yeah, uh, to kind of talk on that, I think that for this program specifically, I think there's a lot of communication between the classes because at least like for the Facebook group that we have for the nursing color scholars here, uh, we have like this one where the seniors are helping us out. They're telling us, you know, they gave us a textbook for one of them. Uh, they help us out. They, we have any questions about organic chemistry, you can ask them, you can reach out. And uh, what Yamar said, there's a lot of resources for the Nursing Scholar Program. You got a lot of support that you can back up on. And um, it's because of that, I think that's really one of the main reasons why I actually chose to go into the Nursing Scholar Program, because I know that there's, it's a difficult program to get into and to continue going into, but with the resources that you have, it's completely possible. Thank you. And you have to remember that you, if you uh, were admitted into Hunter College and then you were offered a scholarship through the, the uh, Nursing Scholar Program, you definitely can do this program. Okay, so, and congratulations everybody also. I should have said that at the beginning. So anybody else have, I mean, you should be very proud of yourselves. Anybody have any other questions? I have a question. Will there be any in-person meetings over summer or everything will be virtual? I, I don't really know. Uh, Alfred, do you have any, you have any insight on that? Sure. So um, to, the, uh, to our knowledge, uh, the summer will uh, continue to be virtual. Um, just a quick update for all. Uh, we do anticipate the fall um, to be in-person in some capacity. Uh, more details will be announced, um, but for the summer, um, still remain virtual again, and then the fall will be in person some capacity. Yeah, we used to uh, we used to uh, do the June orientation up at the main campus in Hunter. I used to come in and we used to do the orientation there. Um, so I don't think I think that definitely will be virtual. And and what I what I'm hearing for the fall is that any classes or people that are getting together that are less than twenty will be in person like the, right now I know the nursing students have uh, in-person lab uh, the nursing my class representatives do you guys have anybody in your labs that are more than uh, 20 people are you going to any classes that have more than 20 people in in person uh, no I all my classes like that are labs that we go is generally like less than 20 usually like 14 15. Um, last semester when I was taking, uh, I don't remember what class, the general, the one that Umaris is taking, not Patho, the other one, I forgot the name, but we were meeting um, in, cl in class, it was 14 people, we would go like once a week, uh, all sit like six feet apart, it was very. Yeah, so I, that's what I'm hearing and um, so I, I really think it's going to be all virtual for you know, for next semester also. And then I think um, hopefully by spring, we will be back on campus, you know, full, all classes and everything. So, uh, you know, I'm ready to go back. I'm certainly ready to go back. So we just, listen, at least we're at this point in this pandemic and we're not just starting like last year. So we have to look forward and just, um, you know, hope for the best. Any other questions? I actually have some- Oh, go ahead. 
I'm so sorry. Good afternoon. So I have a quick question, like out of curiosity, what does the lab, um, like what are the things you do during lab? And if I'm not mistaken, I think I forgot her name, the sophomore representative, she said something about clinical. Can I have like a little bit more insights of what that refers to and like what, or what is required of you? Good question, Jennifer. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so for a lab, um, I'm taking the fundamentals, uh, well, not fundamentals, um, like nursing assessment. So in lab, we learn how to like assess um, a patient based on like a system. So like you'll learn how to assess some, um, do a cardiovascular assessment, a neural assessment, a muscular assessment, a respiratory assessment, and those kind of things. Um, you'll also practice some skill checks. So like my upcoming skill check is an IV um, fluid insertion and blood drawing. But in the past, I've had um, a wound care skill check and a vital sign skill check. So you'll, you'll basically just like pretend that there's a patient, like with we have a dummy. So we'll use that dummy as our patient and we'll, we'll like use it as a real, like we pretend that it's a real patient. So we introduce ourselves and act like what a real nurse, like what a real nurse would do. And we're graded like that. And as for clinicals, in clinicals, it's like more hands on because you actually get to interact with people. So um, in my clinicals, I've taken vital signs. I've also um, given out food and I've, um what else have I done I've done a bed bath in clinicals as well so in clinicals it's like you actually use the skills you learn in lab and apply it to a real person and that's basically it so for every theory class there is a lab component to it so um you would have for so for fundamentals that Yamaris was talking about which is your first nursing uh real nursing course um, she has, she actually goes to a clinical area. She goes to, are you going to Mary Manning Walsh? Where do you go, Yamaris? Um, I go in St. Barnabas. It's in the Bronx. So she goes to St. Barnabas. You actually go with your cohort. You have this, uh, eight other, seven other students with you usually? Um, I have four other students. So you'll go with an instructor and you'll actually go from, is it seven to one you're doing? Like it's usually five hours. Okay. Mine is from 7.30 to 11. So it's pretty short. I know some people have it from like seven to one, but they have like, um, so I do it until May and some students might do it to like April because their um, clinicals is longer or longer. Yeah, you have to have a certain, the state requires for you to sit for the NCLEX, the nursing exam um, after you graduate, you have to have a certain number of clinical hours and the state has mandated those hours. So the school has made it that you will have clinical experiences each semester starting in sophomore year, spring semester, that you uh, meet those clinical hours in order to take the exam. So every class has uh, a theory component, for example, and then it also has a lab component and it also has a clinical component. So, um, and that's where you'll go to different hospitals. And what we try to do now is we really try to be cognizant of where you live and where you're gonna be placed in a clinical experience. But, you know, it's very difficult to get clinical placements because everybody's vying for these placements. You know, you have medical students, you have social work students, you have uh, psychology students, everybody's trying to get places in, in the hospital. So um, we do the best we can. So um, could Manar and um, Madeline, just tell me a little about different places you were in your clinical uh, experiences. What are the hospitals? Sure. So I'm now in my advanced med surge clinical, which is in person at MIP Cornell. And I've been there twice actually now, which is, that's another great thing about being at Hunter, especially if you want to work in this city after graduation, because NYP hires a lot of Hunter graduates and you, it's very likely that you'll have at least one clinical there. And the nurses have been very great on the floor. They're they're very welcoming and really let you do a lot of things. Whereas it does really depend hospital to hospital. I was at St. Barnabas as well for one. And they're, it's just, they're very short staffed and they're a lot busier. So you weren't able to do as much, but 
it's very exciting as you go through the years because they really once they you know here you're a senior they really they trust you a lot more and they let you they'll let you, you know, actually give medications under with you know supervision of your instructor and everything as well so that's been very helpful to progress through so that you really feel prepared by the end um and then you're also at lennox hill a lot there are a lot of manhattan placements which is definitely helpful because a lot of people prefer to be in manhattan sometimes people get put into the bronx or queens but they do they do generally look at your location for the most part i've gotten the area that i've requested or at least my first or second choice so that is very helpful you, i don't think no one's ever gotten stuck on Staten island or anything like that so but definitely really try and take advantage of your clinical experience because if you if you're kind of just you know sitting quietly there you're not going to get out of it as much as you really should so you really got to speak up for yourself and really try and do as much as you can and get as much hands-on experience as possible. Eleanor, what about you? Where have you been? So for freshmen, when we first started clinicals, sophomore year, I was at um, Cardinal, Terrence Cardinal Cook, which is a nursing home that was for fundamentals. Um, and that got cut short because of the pandemic. Um, but I was there, it was basic. We, we did like vital signs. You learn how to do assessment. Like they'll give you like a sheet like to follow how to, how to do an assessment on a patient. Um, and then my second clinical was at the VA, which is the Veteran Affairs Hospital. It's right next to, it's like a block away from um, Bellevue and from, not Bellevue, from our main campus, from the nursing campus. And um, my third one was at uh, Bellevue, which is my current one. I had both my maternity clinical and right now I'm in my pediatric clinical. So that's when you start doing like nursing care plans, which is like basically like you'll, you're basically writing out like how you're gonna care for the patient. Um, I really enjoyed my OB clinical uh, maternity, um, like seeing like the babies and the moms. It was it was fun. You know, um, I really encourage it, when I see my freshmen that come in. I always encourage them to think about either vo doing volunteer work in a hospital or getting some kind of a job in a hospital, because it's really important that you try to get some experience before you graduate school in a hospital setting because it will really help you once you do start working. Um, when I was 13, I started working at St. Vincent's Hospital in the city as in pediatrics because um, they had a Vincentine program. My mother was a graduate of St. Vincent's. And so I worked pediatrics at 13. Um, I then went and worked in a nursing home with people with Alzheimer's disease and I worked in a community hospital for med surge. So, I worked for eight years before I even graduated from nursing school. So um, I was very comfortable in the hospital setting. So it's really important. I encourage you all to think about doing that um, once hospitals open up and allow for volunteers to go in. After sophomore year, you can um, apply for a um, certified nursing assistant job and um, you could work as a CNA in hospitals uh, while you're doing junior and senior year. So it's really, really important that you consider that because um, it'll really help you uh, be more comfortable once you graduate. Also, um, it also gives you a foot in the door for a place you might wanna work. I mean, if you're working as a CNA in let's say um, Lenox Hill Hospital, and then you graduate and you want a job at Lenox Hill, they're more likely to take you because they know you're a good worker than someone who uh, is outside that has, is gonna apply. So please keep that in mind. Um, any of my students, I know, uh, Madeline, I know, I believe you've done an internship or an externship. Could you speak to that a little? Sure. So that's uh, another great thing about Hunter is that a number of, I don't know if any of you are aware of the Golden Ticket, I'm not sure of the name, Golden Ticket Nursing Student Award. I think it's a Northwell Award. And Hunter students are eligible for that. A number of us get picked, a few of us get picked every year and you're able to go to this special seminar about upcoming externships and then new grad fellowships upon graduation. And so I was able to go to that last year, which I was then able to get an internship in the ER, which is what I wanna do following graduation. So that was an amazing experience. I highly recommend trying to apply to one of those internships because I also work as an aide, which is a great learning experience. And honestly, I learn a lot more there than even clinical because you're just very hands-on. Um, but the internship, you're working one on one with the preceptor. So they they really you see what it's like to be a nurse for a whole 12 hour shift. You they really let you do a lot with their patients and you see how a whole shift works. And just having a patient from beginning to end 
So I highly recommend doing that. They're, you're generally eligible the summer before junior, no, before senior year, after junior year, you can apply. So that was definitely the best decision I've made. Um, Menor, did you do any internships or have you worked at all? Or? Um, I haven't done any internships or externships. I'm actually looking, I'm looking into applying right now for the summer. Um, I'm, I'm about to start applying. Okay, good, good. Really, really important. You know, nursing is very stressful and, and is a, a, you know, I, I don't want to say the exact percentage, but it's a high percentage of new graduates who think about leaving nursing in the first year because of the stress of nursing. So it's really important that you have some experience, um, some exposure to the hospital setting before you graduate, because it'll make your transition from student to nurse much more, much easier. Um, anybody else have any other questions? I have another question about um, advisement. Like, what, does the scholar advisement team work with like college credits that you might have earned in high school? Um, I saw on the website there was like a transfer equivalency. I think this goes more with like admissions, um, like a transfer equivalency evaluator. Um, and I just want to know if like being in the nursing scholar program would like like make me not like have those credits accepted in any way, or if that's a good representation of what would be accepted. So you can, um, and actually the scholar advising team will get in touch with you soon about registration and about how to transfer credits. You can uh, transfer any science credits that you've taken. If you've taken um, chemistry, if you've taken anatomy, physiology, maybe statistics, you can transfer. Nursing, nursing course credits, which I'm sure none of you have taken because you're in high school, um, would not be transferred. You can't take any, um, all your nursing courses have to be at Hunter College. Um, Alfred, is there anything you wanted to say to that or? Yeah, I just wanted to add, um, just make sure um, if you haven't done so already to submit um, any transcripts or um, official documents um, to the admissions office um, because we'll, what we'll do is we'll do the transfer credit evaluation. And then that's what the advisors have to essentially say, okay, you completed this course, you completed that course. You don't have to worry about like um, uh, Professor Abigail Kotowski said, you know, oh, you know, you don't have to worry about statistics. You don't have to worry about a particular science. So yeah, make sure you submit those as soon as possible if you haven't done so. So do you think- Can I just add something to that? Um, Cause I had also taken a lot of college credits in high school. And there is a limit to the amount you can transfer in though and still be in the scholars program because I know I needed to retake a psych class because if I transferred all of those credits, I would be considered a sophomore and then I couldn't be in the honors program. So just be wary of that. That may be an issue if you have, I think it was 15 credits. I'm not sure what the exact limit is, but. Okay. What did you transfer, Madeline, if I can ask? Um, anatomy and physiology, one and two, statistics, and then English 120, I think. Oh, then there were a couple other classes I had as well, but they wouldn't take all the classes. So I just kind of picked. But it was great that you were able to transfer the AMP. Yeah, it was very helpful. And because especially sophomore year, as you've heard, is very tough. So it was great to not have to, be, not have to take any core classes. So I could just focus on my nursing and science classes. Okay, good. Yeah, so please keep that in mind, everybody. Make sure you try to transfer any credit, uh, credits that you have to lighten your, you know, your load. Anybody else have questions? Um, I have a question. Yes, um, so in the same vein of AP credits, I mean, this year, there's um, our AP tests are spread like uh, very, there's like what, about an, a month and a half, like distribution of tests being able to, that we can take. Um, I was wondering uh, if we're still planning on taking these AP tests, uh, how do we get those official trans like those official AP scores to be sent in before we register for classes? Or should we send them in now or should we wait until we get all the scores in? You want to wait until you get all your scores um, because that's how we do the evaluation specifically for APs. Right, thank you. Anybody else have questions? Uh, yes, I actually do have a question. So uh, I know that we have the full um, tuition scholarships, but as far as I know, we have to pay some other fees. So I was wondering if we, uh, yeah, if we will be receiving any form of like financial package that we can like present to our families where we can discuss everything. 
I can also answer that. Um, so on your CUNY First account, there's an option that says view financial aid. Um, so if you look there, your financial aid package should be available to you if, as long as you submitted a, a FAFSA application, put in Hunter School Code. And if you need help with that, just reach out to us in admissions and we can show you how to locate that. But it should be available if you completed um, all the applications you need to, needed to. Got it. Thank you. I actually have a question that kind of relates to the, like, the last question. So with FAFSA and everything, like, do we have to submit TAP as well or... Would that just yeah you definitely want to submit all kinds of um things whether it's tap excelsior so forth um and of course with tap you're only allowed if you're a new york resident i'm only allowed to put one college so you want to put hunter if you know you're oh, all right thank you all right thank you so much anybody else have questions uh when it comes to external scholarships um it if it, when it comes to external scholarships, and uh, in my case, I expect that it, uh, with those external scholarships plus the TAP plus the Pell would already exceed my uh, cost of attendance, would students get any of the kickback? Like would get a refund or any sort of stuff like that? Alfred, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Sorry. Oh, thank you. Um, so, Mary, it would be best um, for you to um, discuss this with financial aid in more detail. But if you want, um, you can reach out to us uh, in admission just so we, so we could kind of take a look at exactly what your awards are and what you're expecting in terms of external awards. And then maybe, um, you know, give you a little bit more of an answer specific to uh, you. So uh, just reach out to us. And if we can help you, we'll uh, direct you to uh, the appropriate office. So, you know, just keep in mind, any financial questions, uh, Alfred is the money man. I am not the money man, money person. So um, really direct any kind of questions about scholarship or finances to um, Alfred and the, the scholar advising team, anything with nursing, um, you know, but you can certainly email me about anything and I will, you know, refer you to the, the appropriate person. Um, so are there any uh, last questions? I have one question. Oh. Sorry. Oh, you can go. You can go. Um, so how would, would you know that you're already accepted this offer to the scholars program? Alfred? So sorry, I, I did not hear what you said. How did you say that again? How would you know that you, you're like part of the scholars program now? So um, in the acceptance letter, you did receive um, some uh, terms and conditions that you would have to review and sign. So once you've submitted that, along with submitting your deposit to Hunter, you're all set. Okay. There are Thank actually you. some, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Alpha, but there are uh, some students that are on today, right, that are already admitted, right? Because they've done those, that paperwork? Right, so everyone, everyone um, here is either admitted or already committed to Hunter. Um, they may or may not have already um, completed the terms and conditions, but it is quite possible, yes, that they may, we have students here that have done both already. Okay. If you have any questions and if you uh, want to have a phone conversation with me, like I've, I've had a few phone conversations with maybe about eight of you at this point, so you can certainly um, send an email to Alfred and he'll get in touch with me and I will um, make a phone call with you. Um, I would like, to, um, if there's no more questions, I'm going to just have each of the class representatives just say a lasting uh, Last comment, Alejandro, you want to start? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, just as a final note, uh, once again, just talking about the nurse scholars experience in general is that it's definitely a big help. And if you're still kind of on the fence between accepting it or not, or accepting something else, I would just say that uh, for me, for my, what made me go over was the fact that you had a really big support group, but there are a lot of other things that make the nursing scholar program unique. And I would encourage you guys to go ahead. You can reach out to any one of the four of us today. And then I know Dr. Katowski has her email and everything. And that just kind of reflects how very uh, the communication level that is present inside of the Nursing Scholar Program. Thank you, Alejandro. Damaris? Yeah, I'd like to say like congrats to all of you guys for getting into the Nursing Honors Program. And uh, it's it's a really good experience. I. I enjoyed 
well, I, I'm enjoying my time in this program and like, I really appreciate like the priority registration and the, um, the support group, the financial help, like everything about this program. Like, I feel like it made me, it's making me succeed in the program. And uh, I hope you guys all decide that you guys wanna go to Hunter and I might see you as in the lower grades and you guys could always reach out to me. So, yeah. Thank you, Yamaris Manar. So like you Maris said, congratulations. Um, it's a big accomplishment. It may not seem like it, but once you start talking to other people, if you decide to, to be in the nursing program and the scholars program specifically, you're gonna realize that you have a little bit of an advantage, which is a good thing. Um, uh, yeah, like she said, like you could reach out to any one of us. You could reach out to me. Like I'm not gonna not, I'm not gonna ignore you. I'll help you out as much as I can. Um, it's a good experience. I've enjoyed my time so far, even online, like, it's still like you still get the same support that you would in person. So yeah, congratulations again. Thank you, Manoa. Madeline? So just again, congratulations. And I do highly recommend committing to Hunter if you're still kind of on the fence about it. As a senior, I definitely feel it's prepared me well enough for an, um, graduation next month. And I'm very excited to begin working and definitely feel that I have a lot of opportunities for jobs following graduation and was even reached out throughout graduation as Dr. Kataski was um, referring to it's very important to get work experience while in school and that was definitely we were pushed a lot to do that we were sent different job applications for many things which I have other friends in nursing school who they weren't reached out to as much and so that was something you needed to go look for and that's honestly that I think that's been one of the most important things throughout nursing school for me was to be able to work so that has been very important very critical. So I highly recommend it and hope hope to see you guys around in the future. But definitely reach out if you have any questions or further questions about clinical experience. I also stayed at Brookdale as well. So if you have questions about that, please let me know. Thank you, Madeline. Does anybody have any last questions like maybe or but also about the dorm? Anybody have any questions about the dorm? I know we're getting a little uh, over time now, so I don't want to hold Alfred. But anybody else have any questions about dorming? Oh, I, um, you can go, Janae. Thank you. Um, is there a way that I could have, like, uh, maybe a visit or something on the dorm so I could see what it's like before I make a decision about whether I want or not I want to stay on the dorms for the first year? I don't know if they do that, Alfred. Do you know? So, Janae, as of right now, um, because everything is still virtual, we don't have any, um, in-person kind of visits in terms of the dormitories. Um, but I could definitely talk to you a little bit more in person. So if you could just email admissions at hunter.cuny.edu, um, just ask to chat with someone about it. I could definitely give you more information that might be more helpful, even though um, you can't actually go in person. Okay, thank you. Uh, any of those, um, I know Menar and Madeline, you stayed in the dorm. So what was it like in the dorm? I definitely had a great experience. Um, it was, it's re the, really the location is everything. You're right, you're, it's actually physically connected to the nursing campus. So you didn't even have to step outside to get to your nursing lectures and labs, which was extremely convenient. And especially since you have a lot of, you have clinicals when they're in Manhattan, I would you know, only have to leave like 20, 30 minutes before it started as opposed to commuting from home would have been two hours for me. So the saving that time was huge. And it's also, I'm not sure what the pricing is right now, but when I say there, it was very inexpensive to be living in Manhattan for that price, but unbelievably un inexpensive. So I highly recommend it. It was very worth it. And it was also great to really be, there's a number of nursing students who stay at the dorm. So to have that community there, you know, to not be staying home yourself, studying until 2 a.m., you'd be with friends studying. It's just, I found out a lot more productive. They help, you know, push each other and, I would highly recommend it. It's also a lot of fun to live in the city. You really get to take advantage of that more so. And so I did, I had more time to work or volunteer, which was very beneficial as well. The Brookdale campus is on 25th and 1st. And that's where, uh, like Madeline was saying, a lot of the nursing classes are and the labs are there. And uh, that's where like one building is uh, the dorm and the other building is where nursing faculty is. Like my office is actually an old dorm room. So, and my sister went to Hunter Nursing School and I was working in Hunter uh, Pediatrics at the time. She was in Hunter 
undergraduate. And I used to stay with her sometimes because sometimes I would do a double shift. Back then it was eight hour shift. So I would do like eight in the morning till midnight, you know, the same day. So I would stay in the dorm with her and a little futon. So, so it's a great experience. But uh, what about Menar? You have anything to say about the dorms? So um, like Madeline said, I the dorm is a great experience overall. The location is perfect. Um, it was super convenient. One thing I really liked is when I spoke to other people who were dorming, like not in Hunter, um, it was always like two people in a room, like sharing. Most of the rooms at Hunter, at Brookdale, they're one person. So I had my own room, which was amazing. And um, I got lucky I was right in front of the bathroom. So like I would, I would be one of the first people in there. Um, it's very inexpensive for a dorm. Like other people will pay like 10, 20K. This one I think is like 3K a semester. That's when when I dormed. Um, I recommend you doing it your sophomore year. That's when it's like the hardest. That's when you have clinicals, labs. Those classes are the most difficult. But it was an overall great experience. Otherwise, if you do it in freshman year, you're going to be taking the bus right outside the dorm on uh, First Avenue up to um, 68th and First, or you go over to Lexington and take the bus up to 68th and Lex you know, on Lexington Avenue. So it's just a bus, uh, a bus uptown if you're going instead of we're traveling from wherever you are. Alejandro and Yamarish, you never were in the dorm, right? Okay. Okay, anybody else have any questions? Did I go through everybody for last remarks? I think Alejandro said something. Yamarish, you have any last remarks? Um. Well, and good luck to everyone. I hope you guys all make a decision and like have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Oh. oh, did someone else have a question, Jennifer? Yeah, I'm sorry. I have a quick question. So right now I am going to be committed to Hunter. However, I was also given the opportunity to be on the wait list for Macaulay Honors. So right now I'm thinking of accepting the nursing scholars program because I already have a seat in, whereas the wait list, I will be waiting for a long time. But when would the deadline be to officially commit to a nursing honors, scholar honor program? So you, to answer your question, you'd want to do it by May 1st. Um, it's in line with our admission deadline. Great. Okay, thank you. And for the terms and conditions, I would just have to press accept our offer, correct? Because I got the email saying that I got the opportunity to be here. So it's like a PDF that you'd actually download and print and sign it, and then you're just going to submit it. So okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, I'm getting the uh, any uh, little note that we have to wrap up. So unless there's any more uh, questions or comments, you can certainly email me, um, and uh, you can email Alfred and. Um, anybody, but it's so nice to meet you all. And I, I thank my class representatives so much for um, helping me out today. And it's a pleasure to meet you. I hope I see you um, soon. And thank you, Alfred, for helping. And thank you, Irina, for helping. And please um, if, reach out to me if you want to talk on the phone. We can also do that. Absolutely. And just uh, really quickly, I just wanted to say a final goodbye. Thank you, everyone here um, who joined us, our staff, faculty, students. Uh, and students who have been admitted to Nursing Scholars. Um, we hope you liked everything that you heard and uh, that this uh, makes you ready to join us. Uh, we encourage you to continue learning about us, about our programs, our student life opportunities. Um, and if you're um, interested in housing, just make sure that you submit your housing application. It is already live and open on the housing website. Um, deadline for priority housing is April 12th um, and you're a priority group. So you wanna make sure you submit it by, by then. Um, also, if you want to hear from students um, and just ask them certain questions on our admitted student page, it actually has a chat with us, a chat with student option. So that'll take you straight uh, to current admitted stu um, current students at Hunter. So you can ask them questions. And finally, you know, if you decided Hunter is the place for you, just make sure that you um, commit and deposit by May 1st um, to reserve your spot. So again, thank you all for being here and have a wonderful day.